Congrats, you got yourself a shiny brand new Xbox Ally or Ally X. So what the heck do you do now? In this video, I'm going to be providing some beginner tips and tricks on how to set up your ROG Xbox Ally and Ally X to get the most out of it while gaming in Windows. Now, I know most of you just want to jump right into the full screen experience, but doing this will allow you to have an even better experience while playing games. And for all of these, you'll need to actually step into the full Windows mode to get things just right. To get into the Windows desktop, you can either hold down the Xbox button or swipe up on the touchscreen. This is basically kind of like the alt tab view of things. And on the bottom, you'll see a Windows desktop tab. Click that, click continue, and you should boot into a full version of Windows. If you play games from here, which I highly do not recommend, there will be a slight impact in performance, but you'll have access to all of the settings in Windows, and that's exactly what we want right now with things. First things first though, right when you boot in, you're going to want to update Windows in settings and also the settings in Armory Crate. And this could take a few hours. So make sure you have something to eat, drink, put on some anime, movie, whatever. You'll be sitting here for a bit waiting for things to happen. In order to do this, you're going to want to hit the Armory Crate button and then click Open Armory Crate SE. Go to the updates and check for updates. Also, you're going to want to check the My Aces app for updates because sometimes updates don't always pop up in Armor Crate, but they always do in the My Aces app. So you've got to check both just in case. I'll just leave that as Windows simply being Windows. Oh, and by the way, while you're in the My Aces app, you can also register your device to activate the warranty from here as well. While in Windows, make sure that you check the Microsoft Store to update any apps. Let's go to Downloads and check for updates. There, you should be able to just find immediately an Xbox app as well as Game Bar update just waiting for you, at least at the bare minimum. This will keep things up to date and nice and smooth. Now, my experience might be a tad different from yours because both of my units were running a pre-release version of everything, but it took me about an hour to an hour and a half to get everything updated over Wi-Fi. So your experience might be a little bit different depending on well, your Wi-Fi, your internet experience, and so on and so forth. But now that everything is up to date, let's start downloading some launchers. Make sure that you have all of your login information ready and set to go. And if you're coming from an Xbox console and have a Game Pass subscription, then you should be able to just download games directly from Game Pass. But if you have your games elsewhere, like I do, Steam, GOG, or even Epic, then you'll want to download the launchers to be able to play those games there on your handheld. Although most of my games are on Steam, I do have Epic installed because from time to time you are going to get free games, and they're just games that I've been wanting to play, and it's just kind of nice to have them for free instead of buying them and having an ever-growing backlog. GOG is great for their game preservation program as well as DRM free games. So if there's something that you want to buy and support the developers and IP owners of older titles, then this is a great option. GOG has gone out of their way to even hiring PIs to track down the original IP holders just to make sure that, you know, they do things legally. So it's pretty sure to say that they're serious about this stuff. But yeah, this is really a person by person situation in terms of what launchers to get. But it's safe to say that most people play on Steam, especially when it comes to PC games as a whole. Now I have the majority of my game library on Steam, so I wanna make sure that when I boot up my Xbox Ally or Ally X that I'm going straight into Steam big picture mode. This just makes it much easier to control and navigate in a handheld. And now you don't have to worry about using any sort of touchscreen or clumsy launch sequence in order to get things going. So while you're in Steam, go to Steam settings, and then from there go into interface. Here you can toggle on Steam to boot up right when you turn on your handheld, and you can also make sure that it boots up into big picture mode. And yeah, after that, you're pretty much set and ready to go. But while you're playing games, regardless of whatever launcher, you want to make sure that you have some quick fire changes that you can make right then and there straight from the get go. Obviously, this is dependent on the situation, but you should take a moment to get used to the command center on this thing. It's basically kind of like a quick settings menu, but you can customize it to your liking. Push down the Armory Crate button and the command center is going to pop up. From here, you can access a lot of the toggles and settings that you can find in Armory Crate, at least most of them, but not all of them. If you want to adjust things, then hit the Y button to customize the menu. That same button when hovering over a tile icon will let you move it either up or down in the menu. The features icon, these are the big ones that have multiple functions so that you can toggle, are grouped separately from the features tiles, and those are the little tiny square ones. But 
honestly, that doesn't matter too much because you can set these up however you want and have either as many or as little as you'd want. By default, there are some things that you'd want to change just straight from the get-go to make sure that you customize your experience. One of the most important feature styles on the command center though is the operating mode or essentially the TDP. Since both the Xbox Ally and Ally X have different wattages for their own systems, the easiest way to talk about these two is literally to just talk about them as TDP settings in their respective modes, either silent, performance, or turbo. A little tidbit on that though, is that the screen brightness settings that can be adjusted for each one of the operating modes are saved too. So this is actually pretty nifty. If you wanna save battery life as much as possible, set it to silent mode and make sure that the screen setting is set to the, well, most comfortable setup that you can. Now silent is always going to give you the most battery life, but it will also give you the worst performance overall. That being said, this is a great option for not only indie games, but also emulation. So most of the time, they don't really require too much horsepower. Performance mode is a nice balance between performance and power draw. It will drain your battery a little tiny bit faster than silent mode, but it won't chug juice that's in the battery like turbo mode will. The new Z2 line of chips found in these handhelds are really good at the performance gains at the setting compared to the last generation. Now, turbo mode is where you give a ton of battery juice into the processor for each of these handhelds. And for the most part, it's great, but performance gains compared to the last generation are anywhere between 10 and 20% on average. So don't go expecting any sort of miracles. But let's say that you want more juice or you want less juice, you can technically adjust the limits past these three presets by going into a manual TDP setting. This will allow you to dial the exact settings that you want for your handheld. This is great because if you need a game to simply just run better, you can increase the TDP and the wattage of the processor. Also, if you're playing an indie like Silk Song or Celeste, then you might not need a 13 watt TDP. You'd probably be fine with less and you'd get even more hours and hours of game time slap down the 720p resolution and you're doing much better and getting even more time. But the TDP is only half of the equation. We need to talk about the amount of memory that goes into the GPU. VRAM is something that you can always tweak as well. To change these, go into performance, GPU settings, and memory assigned to GPU. Now the Xbox Ally X is set to eight gigabytes, but you can add more VRAM if needed. In some instances, it would be best to go with either 10 or even 12 gigabytes of VRAM for some more GPU intensive games. I personally always have my set to eight gigabytes at 1080p gaming, and that's enough for me personally. Now the Xbox Ally on the other hand is set to four gigabytes by default. And in my experience, setting it to six or eight gigabytes is pretty solid, but I've talked to other content creators like Retro Tech Dad, who have let me know that auto just worked fine for them. And if you never wanna mess with the VRAM settings, then this is actually a good option for you. The system will do the setup for you and you kinda just don't need to worry about it. Regardless of whatever option you choose, when you change the VRAM to the desired amount, you'll need to restart the system in order to apply these settings. So, okay, you have your settings dialed in, your VRAM set, but you wanna make sure that things stay cool. Your processor will throttle and slow down if things get too hot on your system. And this is a very personal and unique situation because the temperature and environment you're in might be completely different from mine. It is different from person to person. I'm in Florida, it's hot and humid here. But by default, the settings are pretty good. But if you live in a hotter climate, like myself, you might need to adjust some of these settings. You're going to want to do some trial and error here until you find what works for you. Also, keep in mind that this is only in the manual TDB setting. This is not there or available for any of the operating modes that are on your PC handheld. But once you have all that dialed in, let's take a second to talk about everyone's favorite thing in the PC space, RGB. If you find them annoying or tiring, technically you can turn these off directly on one of the feature tiles in the command center. This does a little bit in order to save battery life, but not enough to make a huge impact. But if you're in for a long play session, plane ride, train ride, whatever, it will help. At the same time, you can have these time out if you're not doing anything with them. I usually have them off when I'm playing in bed before I go to sleep because I just don't want to disturb my wife. But like most of these adjustments, this is all up to you. But the most important thing, at least for me, is being able to adjust the color profile on the built-in screen. I work in photo and video all day long, so I'm pretty sensitive to these colors on the panels and being off is just an immediate red flag for me. It just doesn't feel right. Obviously, this is 100% dependent on the person, but I like to have the colors just right on my handheld to get the best experience. 
You want to experiment until you find something that suits your needs on what you're looking for. Thankfully, there's a slew of presets that you can choose that Asus has given us for all of the different color profiles that are there, but you can adjust it manually if you want to. Now, with everything said and done, you might not be getting all of the frames that you want. You might actually need to get some sort of frame generation going to get your games running smoother. And thankfully, AMD has provided something called AFMF, or AMD Fluid Motion Frames, available right out of the box. This is a system-wide frame generation tech that is at the driver level. What that means is that it pretty much works with most games without you or the developers doing anything extra. You can set it and forget it for most of the time. The only drawback is that there's going to be a tad bit of input latency, but this is normal for any sort of frame generation. If you don't want any latency for sports games or shooters, then I definitely recommend turning this off. You can toggle it off either in a feature tile in the command center, or you can go into the Armory Crate app, performance, GPU settings, and there is a toggle for AMD fluid motion frames. If you have an Asus ROG Ally, then you're probably feeling the squeeze of that 512 gigabyte SSD already, but there's a quick fix for that. You can always use a micro SD card to expand your memory, but which one should you get? I'll tell you right off the bat that you don't need to get one of those micro SD express cards that Nintendo is using with their Switch 2. And although their read and write speeds are up there, the card reader that is in the Ally and Ally X can't read that fast. As long as it is a UHS-1 or 2, then you should be fine. I'll have some link down below so you can go ahead and check them out yourself. Just make sure that when you do install it on here that you format it to either NTFS or XFAT for compatibility with Windows. Speaking of Windows, getting rid of bloatware is a whole other thing. Now, Xbox full screen experience does a lot of things to improve the gaming experience on this handheld, but by default, there are going to be a few things that you simply don't need that come pre-installed in Windows because, well, it's Windows. To remove them, you're going to want to go into installed apps in system settings and uninstall unnecessary Microsoft applications like Microsoft 365, Clipchamp, OneNote, Teams of all things and to do, and they are not needed for gaming on a handheld. Now, Copilot and feedback are really up to you. I know that there are some AI features that are going to be coming out that I talked about in my initial review. Feel free to go ahead and check that out, but we don't know when they're going to be released. And if something breaks, I feel like Feedback Hub would be a nice to have, but again, these are totally up to you. You don't need them in order to play games that you just want to play on this handheld. With all of the updates, tweaks, and unnecessary apps uninstalled, you can now run a disk cleanup. This will get rid of any sort of temporary files or old update files that are no longer necessary. They would take up necessary space and just slow things down over time. Ever since I set these things up on my Windows side of the Xbox Ally X, things have just been running smoother overall. Now, if you wanna install Bazite OS and have more of a Steam-like experience, then check out this video over here. I'll be doing a full Bazite video specifically for the Xbox Ally and Ally X, so subscribe for that. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.